to uh, Mario next. Mario, welcome to the program. Hi. Hey, Roger. Thanks for taking my call. You're going to have to uh, excuse my my somber mood because I'm very depressed right now uh, with all this talk about Romney being the nominee. This is my first time I've been a Republican. This is my first time voting, you know, and I really was uh, I was impressed by the Republican stance of having uh, limited government, basically just being capitalist, you know, against the socialist. I look at what's going on right now with Romney, and I think, you know, if we're going to accept, accept somebody who is pro-state-mandated health care, if we're going to accept somebody who has been uh, pro-choice, if we're going to accept somebody who was pro-banker bailout, somebody who praised Timothy Geithner, and Ben Bernanke for doing a good job, and then letting him be our nominee, somebody to represent uh, people who are supposed to be fiscally responsible. What, what, what is going to stop any young people coming into the party from doing the same thing, doing the same flip-flopping that Romney has done? Where are our principles? No, well, I don't know. I listened. Did you listen to the speech last night? I did, and it's just more... Just more jabber. I, I heard. I heard a lot of talk. I don't hear a plan. I haven't seen the plan that Romney is going to enact in order to allow us to be a prosperous nation. I haven't heard him actually tackling the real issue. I mean, we're a trillion and a half dollars over budget every single year. What is it? What real? What government agency? He says, okay, maybe I'll deal with the H with HUD. Maybe I'll deal with that. Roger, we got to have somebody who is going to stand up, like you said, to the bureaucrats and who was serious about the Constitution and about the limitations that the federal government and the state well, governments have. Well, look, look, Mario, obviously you had another candidate, as I did, in mind in this race. But look, uh, I'm now convinced. I've, I've, lis- I've sat through a number of Romney speeches. I've actually listened to these things. Um, and with regard to your point about the number of agencies that he would do away with, uh, i got to tell you, this guy, I, I listened to a 40-minute speech in which he went down. I, I, I heard him describe agencies of federal government I'd never heard of before. Uh, he went down with an accountant's precision. The different agencies who are wasting money, how they're doing it, why they're doing it, what the history is, and how it has to be changed. I don't have a doubt in my mind that this guy, who, ha- by the way, is a specialist at turning around institutions, and when I say that, I mean he's a specialist at digging into institutions, coming up with what they do badly, changing them, pairing them back, pairing them back to their, their revenue. And, I mean, this is what this guy has done his whole life. Uh, the, on, on that particular point, I mean, you can make a point about abortion, you can make a point about a lot of other stuff, but on the particular point of his expertise, there's no one in the country who has a record that he has. Well, and he very well have good ideas and no one to do that in the business world, but when we're applying the... Uh, f- f- uh, political philosophies. Where was this principle when he was getting Massachusetts to have mandated state-ran health care? That is the no, most- Mario. I- Mario, no, no question about that. But but look at what he did in Massachusetts. He came in with an overwhelming one-party state. De- liberal Democrats, like like you, you know, I, I have to deal with here in California. Liberal right. Democrats controlling the state legislature. They had a three right. billion dollar deficit. He left with a three hundred seventy-five million dollar rainy day fund. And how much was it, how much now do the taxpayers have to come out of the pocket every single year of their life in order to cover this atrocity that he has given to them? You, you don't want to listen to me, do you? No, I do want to listen to you. I really do want to listen to okay, you. Okay, now do it, let me do it one more time. The fact of the matter is that including the atrocity, which you and I both oppose, including the atrocity, he came in with a $3 billion, this is the state of Massachusetts now, not a large state, $3 billion deficit and left with a $375 million surplus, even after paying for this ridiculous mandate thing. Now, let me just say that today's mandate in Massachusetts is a whole lot different than the one that they went in with. Uh, the mandate that is there now is bankrupting Massachusetts. It was not bankrupting Massachusetts when he was there. That's how it always starts. It always starts off good, and they, they lack principles when they do it, and then the bureaucrats get their hands Mario, off. I have a simple question for you, because you're ranting and raving without relationship to reason. What, who was your candidate? Well, luckily, my candidate is actually 
still in the race and you're dishonestly saying Romney didn't get the delegates that he needed to clinch the nomination last night. Luckily, a man of principle, Ron Paul, is thank still you. in the race. Mario, thank you for the call. Goodbye. Barry is next. Barry, welcome to the program. Hello. Can anybody tell me who Princess Currency? This used to track the exchange of goods between you and me. I watch the dollar lose value every day. And if it ain't going down, my hourly wage just stays the same. Rock child's making up the rules to the game. 